Can you all hear me now? Did you hear me from the beginning at all? You know, let's just start over. Um, I just want to say welcome to everybody. I'm assuming you can hear me now. Um, yep, let me just go back a little bit here to where uh, we started. And I mentioned um, we are going to be doing um, the... Uh, Sorry, I'm going back. Uh, we'll start from the beginning. Thank you again for joining me, everybody. And um, what we're going to do, um, as I mentioned, we, we have started or I have done a few uh, Book of Style um, webinars as well. And these will, are all recorded just for your information as well. Um, and this one is um, too. And it will take a little bit of time for them to get up typically, but not too long. So you'll be able to see them fairly quickly once we, uh, once we finish here. I send them up. So, uh, so bear with the team as they get those posted. Uh, we are going to continue in uh, in the book of style, and today we're going to do, as I started to say, and none of you could hear me, sorry, uh, is the book of style chapter nine, and I say part one because it's abbreviations chapter, and I know uh, there's a lot in this chapter to, to cover, so we're going to take a stab at it, and I prepared essentially things leading up to but not including the dangerous abbreviations because that in itself is almost a webinar. So that's why I'm saying this is kind of part one and we'll see how far we get. And by all means, you can ask questions uh, about the dangerous abbreviations and so on after we finish if we have time. Uh, but know that that one will be coming as well. I have another webinar coming up. Uh, 
I believe at the end of the month. So we could, uh, by all means, do the Chapter 9 um, abbreviations, uh, the dangerous abbreviations, all as almost as one webinar. So for today, we're going to actually take a stab at everything leading up to the dangerous abbreviations. And we'll, we'll start in on that if we have time. We'll do a little bit of test your knowledge uh, as well, because some of you have talked, uh, mentioned to me that you do like that part. So we'll do that, a little bit of that as well. Okay, so we're going to just jump right in. And you'll notice that I don't go through every single section here. But by all means, if you have um, a question about anything that I'm missing, because I do jump uh, through a little bit for ones that are fairly straightforward. Um, so if you have a question, by all means, put it in the chat box and, uh, and I will see it. Um, but we're just going to kind of start um, more or less at the beginning. So um, here we go. So let's just start out with um, with what actually the abbreviation means, and then this is this is all clarified and and explained further in uh, the book of style, and this is what they have to say about that, and I think it's fairly straightforward, and there doesn't seem to be any question about this, but that an abbreviation has become synonymous, meaning the same as without any sh uh, with any short expression that is perceived to represent a longer word or group of words. So uh, it's not that an abbreviation, there is abbreviation and acronym and initialism and brief form. It's that an abbreviation, um, are, um, uh, sorry, each of those things is an abbreviation. And so there are three types. As you can see, there an acronym, uh, initialism, and brief form. And we'll just touch on those very, very briefly because we want to get into the meat of the of the uh, of the webinar today. So we're going to go right into there. And, and I'm going to give a, a definition of those in a, in a moment. But just remember as well that, and this is also covered in Book of Style, that, that all of those things that we just talked about really um, are used to speed up the communication um, in, well, speech really even, but in the medical record. But they can sometimes, as you all can understand and appreciate, uh, create confusion about when to use them, when not to use them, uh, when it's dangerous, when it's not. So um, th there's there's a fine line and a balance in using all of those things. And uh, But just keep in mind that the objective is always, always, whether it's with abbreviations or not, but particularly with abbreviations, uh, is to promote clarity in the healthcare record. Okay, so clarity should always be your focus here. So what, what I just provided here, just in case anyone has any questions about what each one of these are, but I think you can get kind of hung up in what they what they are. But really, I think if you think about it just for a little bit, they all make pretty much uh, some sense here. And you can probably think even of your own, not, not medically related. But an acronym is formed from the initial letters of each of the words that is pronounced as a word. So AIDS, GERD, um, those kind of words. So they all represent each of those letters. And they're all capitalized, you'll note, because they represent something else. They represent another word. Or they rep that capital represents a full word. But it's actually pronounced as a word in total. So AIDS is always said as AIDS, not A-I-D-S, and GERD is GERD, although some doctors will actually say G-E-R-D, for example. So that's an acronym. Uh, an initialism is the same idea formed from the initial letters of each, but it's not pronounced as a word. So ALS, HIV, um, you know, any, you can think of all kinds of things <clears throat> in your life even, um, TNT, you know, um, those kind of things. Um, so that's another form of abbreviation. And, of course, we all know the brief form, the shortened form of a single word. So exam and uh, PAP and labs. And remind me, too, PAP is one of those ones that I get all the time, especially even in practicum um, exams as well, that where the PAP is actually not, um, not capitalized. Actually, I'm going to ask that question now. Why is it that the PAP is capitalized here? It is a brief form, as you can see. It's a shortened form of a single word. But why is it capitalized? Who knows? Catherine is saying name for the researcher. Does anyone know what the researcher's name is? Come on, get your researching skills in there. I know whoever's going to type fastest is going to get it for me. But yes, that's right. Um, it is capitalized. Even though it's a shortened form, it's a capital. It's capitalized because it's a short form of a single word, yes, but it's a short form of a person's name. And whoever is typing very, very quickly here probably is going to, uh, I'm going to open up my chat box because I've just lost it here. Um, there we go. And you might see this, guys, but that's uh, just so I can see it. I need to see it as well. Um, 
It's short for Papana Kalo Kaleu. That's right, Catherine. So that's why it's actually capitalized. Um, it needs to be capitalized um, because it's short for a person's name. So that's why. Um, good one. So remember that even if it's a short form, it has to be capitalized because of that. So let's move on. Okay. Whoops. Sorry about that. Um, and then again, as I mentioned, the the clarity of the record is the objective here um, always, whether it's with abbreviations or otherwise. But as you all know, and you know, there's always exceptions to everything. Um, client preference will often be the final word on this issue, and one might even say be the final word um, on on the issue because the book of style, as we all know, is our in terms of Canscribe is our second go-to reference. However, it is often the gold standard for most um, transcription in, in the workplace, at least in North America, certainly, um, in Canada and the U.S., let's say. Um, and so in the absence of any client preference, uh, the book of style is what, you're, uh, what you'll use to guide you. Um, so remember that there are rules, and we'll even talk about a couple of them today, that we'll see in Book of Style that actually even our own Canscribe uh, account specifics will, uh, will trump. So, but just keep that in mind. So clarity of the record <clears throat> is the objective, but your client preference or your boss, essentially your, the, the people you work for, will often be the final word on the issue and override the Book of Style. But uh, that's just, we're saying that just to keep things in, in perspective, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. And of course, you know me, I always have little cartoons, and I love this in terms of clarity because, uh, you know, it's just, I think we've all been in conversations where <laughs> you just sometimes have, uh, it kind of gets out of control. And of course, here he's saying, you know, I'll have a BLT, and of course, the waiter's saying ASAP or PDQ, meaning PDQ. I think all of you know that, but it's pretty darn quick or otherwise. Anyway, it's just funny. I, I just, uh, I always like to draw from real life on, on cartoons on that. So let's go. Giddy up. Here we go. Okay, let's jump right into, uh, as you can see, we're not starting right at the very beginning, but we're starting at 9.1.5. <clears throat> and those are terms dictated in full. So I know some of you, I actually have my real book, my real book, like is in paper book, out here as well. But you also can refer to it in your um in your uh, electronic version. So 9.1.5, terms dictated in full. Do not use an abbreviation when a term is dictated in full. And, of course, there's an exception, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. Um, and this seems fairly straightforward, I know. Um, but you'd be surprised how many times, if you're not paying attention, if you're not engaged in the record, if you lose focus just for a moment, um, where you'll be used to saying something, or, for example, um, Pardon me, you'll actually, your expander, if you've used an expander or anything else, you just, shortness of breath is one of those ones where you hear it so often, and of course it can stand for other things in life, I think, as well. But just be be careful that you actually don't, um, that you don't uh, use an abbreviation when the term is dictated in full, even if it's, if, even if it's an abbreviation that is used uh, frequently. If it is dictated in full, you actually dictate it, uh, sorry, transcribe it in full and, and not use the, the abbreviation. Um, that's a pretty standard rule. So I'm sure this is not news to some of you, but just be aware of it because it happens, and I've seen it happen in reports as well. And it would be an error, for example, if you did this on an exam, and uh, yeah, and, and it was dictated in full. So that's a pretty straightforward one. I don't think there are, there are any questions on this one, but by all means, if you have a question there, um, go ahead. We're going to talk about the exception <clears throat> right now. Excuse me. Um, here's one. Um, the actual, sorry, it should actually say, maybe I, I didn't mention the units of measure. What it actually says about the units of measure, the 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 um, the exception is that, of course, if, if a unit of measure is unit of measure is dictated in full as well, and this is where I actually use the test your knowledge. So if it says the patient is to take Tylenol three times a day as needed for pain, uh, which uh, would be correct there. The patient is to take Tylenol three times a day, as in spelled out three times a day as needed for pain, or the patient is to take Tylenol TID as needed for pain. So there's some of you who, um, yeah, you're divided on that so far, TID or uh, three times a day as needed. Yeah, 
your keep. Um, now, in our in our situation, of course, if it was dictated, <clears throat> pardon me, <clears throat> excuse me, if it was dictated, that's right. Um, Catherine saying when facility facility preference is known. That's right. So here, essentially, it's a bit of a trick question, uh, but I want to take the opportunity to point it out, is that if the patient, if it says the patient is to take, if it was dictated, pardon me, if it was dictated, the patient is to take Tylenol three times a day as needed for pain, um, in the absence of, uh, for example, uh, knowing uh, whether or not it would be acceptable to type TID, even though TID is is, is certainly um, reasonable and accurate, you would type out at Canscribe, for example, in the course, you would actually type out three times a day because it was dictated that way and it's a verbatim environment. If you also know um, that, for example, if the facility preference is known that oh, any time three times a day is typed, you were to type TID, then that's what you would use, of course, as well. So... Uh, well, no. Uh, someone just asked, would you use three, um, let me just look at how you asked that question, it just disappeared on me. Would you use a numerical value for three? Um, no, because it's either or here. You would, if, if, if it actually said 500 milligrams three times a day, then you could actually put 500 milligrams TID if you knew the, um, the, um, facility preference was known, but T actually means three in Latin. If you look that up, just further down in the chapter, T, the T is the three. So you wouldn't put three TID there uh, because that's redundant um, because the T there in that Latin abbreviation actually means three. So that's just, uh, that's just a note there to uh, um, address that exception. Uh, Carol is saying, what about three times per day? Um, meaning if it was if it was dictated three times per day, um, you would actually type um, you would actually type three times per day in a verbatim environment. Um, but if it actually three times per day uh, and TID is still equivalent to three times a day, for example, if if you were going to if you knew that you could you could um, use the Latin abbreviation, and I think you girls are actually asking the same thing. Teresa is saying, but what should uh, but we should use three, not three the written numeral three, not three in this case. Um, <laughs> I think you guys are all, all asking the same question here. It, maybe it would be easier if I actually said um, the, the three times, sorry, the three times a day, um, if you look, let's go, okay, we're going to jump now already to the Latin abbreviation part. Uh, and the T in TID actually represents three girls. So you wouldn't put three um, in addition to TID ever unless it was to indicate the numeral of the medication or something like that. So essentially here the three times a day is equivalent to TID. So you wouldn't put the, the, the number or spelled out, you wouldn't put three TID or written or numerals. That's just redundant. It would be like saying... Um, what's a good like salsa sauce because it's salsa is a sauce it's redundant it's um, you, you wouldn't actually include the number let me just say Lana's saying no they're asking if you wrote it verbatim would you put three times a day oh I see I'm sorry I'm, I'm a little thick today um, yes that's right if, if, you, if it's verbatim thank you Lana for clarifying that in my brain um, the um, if, if it were verbatim and it said, and, it, and it's dictated three times a day, that's correct. You would put three times a day. That's right. The numeral as in three times a day. Um, I think that's now what you guys were asking. But would it be three times a day or three to Patricia? Yeah. The question is not in addition to three to yes. So yes. <laughs> Sorry, girls. Uh, yes, you would actually type the numeral three as in the numeral three times written out a day in a verbatim environment. Yeah, sorry. That's right. Yeah, Lana is correct, and all of you are correct there. Yes, that's right. But uh, the the point in the matter here, just in terms of if you're going to, uh, the exception is indicating that if you knew um, that the facility preference was to use Latin abbreviations, that you would use CID. That's right, everybody. But that's right. So, um, correct. So it it would be the the number three, correct. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, I think we've clarified that. Now, look, we're just going to move right into, and again, if you have a question, yeah, no, you got me thinking, Lana. You, Lana is saying you got us thinking. No, you got me thinking right away. Um, I'm actually going to, uh, now there's a couple. We're skipping ahead again uh, to 9.1.7 because I think the rest of them, uh, whatever's in between, first time reference I think is fairly straightforward there in the book of style, as is the report section titles. But I wanted to mention it because it's worth pointing out. Uh, write out an abbreviation in full if it is used in the admission, discharge, preoperative, or postoperative diagnosis um, section. And that diagnosis is intended to be singular there, as in like if it's admission diagnosis, discharge diagnosis, preoperative diagnosis, etc. The consultative conclusion or operation title. And so. I keep clicking, I'm sorry. Uh, so as you can see here, if, uh, what was dictated is diagnosis CAD. Um, what should be transcribed is diagnosis coronary artery disease. And what they suggest, of course, um, in the absence, in the absence of um, account preference or facility preference, um, they actually say if it's mentioned, uh, if, if whenever an abbreviation is dictated and it requires that you expand it, as it does here, you actually expand it first and then put the abbreviation in brackets um, after, after, immediately after. And that, they're referring to that as well in 9.1.6 in terms of first time reference as well. So what that does is it indicates that the abbreviation in fact, was dictated, but you're expanding it because it's appropriate to do so in this particular section. So diagnosis CAD uh, was um, dictated, but the appropriate uh, rules, as we know it in this just example, is that we are to expand it. So we are going to expand it, but we're also going to include the um, abbreviation in brackets afterwards to indicate that it was um, dictated. So I think that's fairly straightforward as well. But again, it's worth mentioning. And of course, you can see that I have a but here. And well, let's just see what that says. There are exceptions, as you can imagine. Um, and so what they talk about here, uh, yeah, um, I keep doing that. I'm sorry. So if there is a dictation of a non-disease entity abbreviation, such as lab tests or unit of measure, and this is, again, keeping in mind that it's in the diagnosis and um, diagnosis and consultative um, type, the admission and diagnosis section. Um, so it says that the di um, dictation was diagnosis status post altercation with a three centimeter laceration to the right eyebrow. Because this is an exception here, and it's dictating a non-disease entity abbreviation, um, a unit of measure, we would include it, as you can see on the screen, status post altercation with a three centimeter, as in the abbreviation for centimeter, laceration to the right eyebrow. And this is uh, correct, and it, I hope it makes sense to you on a couple of levels. A, because of the number. The number would certainly make sense in your brains at this point, I hope, uh, even according not only to Book of Style, but to uh, the account specifics to write out, sorry, to include the number as opposed to writing it out. And also that um, the centimeter would actually be, uh, would be uh, abbreviated there because it's a unit of measure. And in addition to that, it actually provides clarity. It draws attention, for example, to the laceration and it in more concisely indicates um, the, the value, not the value, the, the laceration and the, the severity and so on of that. So um, that's, um, that's why. Um, okay, just checking in on the chat there. Um, so I think that makes sense. That's one exception again. So that's why we would not include centimeter there um, written out. And there's another reason actually even a cross-reference in the numbers um, chapter as well that we aren't to that we're going to get into, sorry, later on, just in a second or two as well, in terms of centimeter and metric units of measure. Um, but I think that should be fairly straightforward to everybody and probably intuitive. But I just, again, wanted to mention it because it's an uh, exception um, to this business about not including uh, abbreviations in diagnosis and so on. So if you have any questions on this at this point, please, uh, please send them on through. Okay, so the second uh, exception 
and I think this is also intuitive to most of you as well, uh, is the rare disease entity uh, abbreviations that are better known by their abbreviations than by the full expansion. And of course, the immediate ones that come to mind are AIDS, unfortunately, and HIV. Uh, they have been just part of our vernacular day to day, and it actually, everyone, it is much more clear to many people if you actually use um, the, um, the acronym as opposed to the expanded uh, um, version. Now, having said that, certainly um, I don't think it would be an error if you actually did um, type out the or expand out AIDS, for example, in a, in a diagnosis specifically um, and on an exam or in an exam situation um, and then, you know, include the, the um, acronym as well. But just know that, again, keeping the objective of clarity in mind that you would want, um, certainly that you'd be well within your uh, reason, good reason, to um, um, include it as an abbreviation there. So the rare, and there's not many. I, I'm just trying to think if there are other ones other than AIDS and HIV, for example. Um, may, you know what, ALS may even be one as well, but that's... That, that's really borderline, I'm sure. But I'm sure some of us, uh, you could think of some maybe that might fall into that category. SARS, yeah, even that's debatable. Um, MS, that's true, yep. But again, if in doubt, if at all in doubt, those are good suggestions too, by the way. Um, if in doubt, I would spell it out and then put the, um, put the uh, abbreviation in brackets. Which actually um, goes into, and uh, it's coming up, the, the in 9.8.1.8 about uncertain meanings, multiple or uncertain meanings, and you would certainly do that um, if you were unsure. If you if you got um, if you got uh, an abbreviation, you thought, you know what, this could be a couple of things that I can't really tell by the by the context of the report or by what the doctor is saying, and you just really have no idea. What you would do then is actually, um, and I'm going to get to your questions here in a second, guys. Uh, you, what you would actually do there, if you were uncertain, would be to actually include it and flag it for clarification. Okay. So that's uh, certainly, and that's in 9.1.8, and I'm not sure if I actually include that in the next one. I'll let you know for sure. But I'm just going to check at some questions here. Uh, Carol, sorry I missed you there. So even in Canscribe's verbatim, I am, by the way, account, we can use AIDS under a diagnosis on the exams. Um, to, be, to be absolutely clear, uh, I would say under a diagnosis on the exams, to be sure, Carol, I would actually spell it out just because um, that's one of those ones that's not specifically, um, uh, well, it actually is. It actually says do not use abbreviation. So, you know, it, to be on the absolute safe side across the board, I would actually spell it out and put it in brackets. Um, and then that way you have your bases covered just to be absolutely sure because you don't want to, you don't want to um, risk, you know, getting deducted for something like that. Um, just, I, I would actually, just in terms of Canscribe now, even though we just said something uh, opposite, in terms of Canscribe, just to be sure, across the board, across all instructors, across all exam markers, and so on, I would actually, um, if, it's, if it's part of the diagnosis, um, I would actually maybe even spell it out. Because the reason, again, guys, you can, you can imagine that you want to be absolutely crystal clear when it comes to diagnosis and impression, that kind of thing, because that's really where the rubber hits the road there. You want to be absolutely crystal clear on what it is that you're suggesting or putting forth, meaning what the doctor is putting forth as the diagnosis or the impression. There should be no um, guessing on that. There should be no um, abbreviations in terms of if there's any second guessing or any, any um, guessing there at all. There's, there just should be none. This is supposed to be absolutely clear and there should be no uh, room for a question there in, in those particular um, sections, and that's why. So uh, you could certainly, um, I, I would, to be honest, just even as a matter of course, um, if a diagnosis and it had AIDS, I would actually spell it out just to be absolutely sure in the CanScribe, in a verbatim environment, um, you know, just, just to be absolutely clear. But you will know when you get out into the workplace as well um, how, that, they can, that they will say it's absolutely okay, especially with AIDS or, or something like that. So um, I hope that clarifies a little bit. Uh, Jennifer is saying, sorry, I'm just taking a break here to 
we'll get back to it in a minute. Jennifer saying, is there a comma before the abbreviation in brackets? No, there is no comma, no comma, no comma. No. Uh, it's just, it just follows. So, um, yeah, it would just follow. Great. Okay. Um, okay, so we'll move right on then. <clears throat> Oh, here we go. Here's a here's a test your knowledge. Um, so what was dictated is discharge diagnosis, kidney failure with elevated BUN, which is correct. I guess I should put the A, B, or C in there, but I didn't. So there's three different kind of versions there. Um, discharge diagnosis, kidney failure with elevated BUN. So A, I guess, B, or C. <coughs> so far, we have B, I think, is the front runner. Yeah, we got bees all around. Um, that's correct, everybody. And I'm going to just, yeah, correct. Um, and the reason for that is, of course, we don't need to expand it. Why? Lab value, correct. Lab value. And here, of course, um, when you're expanding the acronym, you don't actually include the capitals uh, when you're expanding it, unless it's, of course, an, um, an eponym or if it's for, you know, like um, short for a person's name or something like that, where it's generally um, not um, capitalized. Why is the heading not in capitals? The heading. I'm not sure, Jennifer. If, do you mean why is the blood? Why is this not in capitals? Is in why is blood urea? Oh, <laughs> sorry. Oh, it should be absolutely. Yeah, uh, the focus wanted to be yes. Yeah, so, so in theory, what it should actually be here. Um, I wanted to. That's right. It should actually be um, according to your account specifics. It should be discharge diagnosis. That's a good point. I was focusing more on the the fact what it should look like um, when you actually um, transcribed it. But of course, it would have capitals when you transcribed it. So yes, in fact, it would be discharge diagnosis um, uh, capital. Capital letters as per account specifics. Yeah, but the focus certainly was on blood B U N there. But yes, good point. I'm glad you brought that up. Just in case anybody else was confused there, why I didn't capitalize that for sure. Um, that was a trick. You passed. <laughs> I will. Uh, I will. Uh, when I send it out, I'll. Uh, I'll put the trick in. Wink, wink. Yes. Good. Good job. Okay, let's go to. Oh uh, yeah. This is how I'm feeling apparently right now because I need help. I need to be on the stretcher. This is often <laughs> what what it can feel like when you're, well, just generally transcribing. But I just put that in there because I saw it, came across it, and laughed out loud. So you're just, I'm just dragging you along with the rest, uh, the rest of you on with me today. Okay, so what do we have coming up? Here we go. Units of measure. And um, that's, of course... Um, always fun and it always uh, creates a little bit of havoc with, with some of us but of course what it says let's read it abbreviate metric units uh, that's right uh, metric units of measure that accompany numeric values and or part of Virgil constructions do not use periods with abbreviated units of measure well that's got all kinds of stuff in there um, and let's just kind of move on. But, of course, the, the important notes here, and I need a little highlighter. Do I have a highlighter? Yeah, I do. No, I don't. There you go. Um, that's the, the, there's, there's a lot of things in here, and of course, I'm not sure if that made it clear or worse. But metric units, very important to, to identify here. Metric units of measure, okay, all right, that accompany numeric values and or part of their goal constructions. Okay, so there's a lot to remember there. And, oh, on top of that, do not use periods with abbreviated uses, uh, units of measure. Okay, well, let's look at that. So she was put on two liters of oxygen. And just for the record, in the book of style, the two and the liters are together, and they shouldn't be. It's an error. She was put on two liters of oxygen. So this is a, a metric unit of measure that accompanies a numeric value. Good. Okay, so we can use liter, L, liter, for liter. Um, or another example, um, just one second, Patricia, I'll answer that in a second. An approximately 2.5 centimeter lesion was found. 
that's a pretty simple sentence, I know, but I wanted to fit it in on one page. Um, uh, why is this uh, abbreviated? Of course, well, it's metric number one, so we're we, yes, we can abbreviate the centimeters, of course, and 2.5 because it's uh, a numeric value and it's accompanying the the metric uh, value. But as you can see here, the wound measured several cent centimeters, and of course, you hear lots of people call it centimeters, which is actually not correct, but anyway, so because it's cent à français. But uh, centimeters would be correct <laughs> in English. But the reason why it's not CM there is because uh, why? There is no numeric value attached to that. So if it's a general, just kind of vague reference, that is, and of course, <laughs> thank you, uh, it's not an exact measure. Yes, that's right. It's several centimeters. Okay, so that's why it wouldn't be CM there. And I think I missed the question from somebody. And Lana, of course, telling me how great my French was. Oh, if only you knew, Lana. Um, okay, Christina, sorry, Patricia is saying, is it oxygen which has the L right beside it? Uh, I'm not sure what you're asking, Patricia, because the oxygen, yeah, this, this, the very first example is two liters of oxygen. And in the book of cell, this very example was used. And the two, there's no space between the two and the liter. And I'm not sure why. I think that's an error. That's all I meant by that. Uh, Christina saying, it does say in BO, BOS that when it is oxygen, there's no space. There you go. Um, so, to, seriously, today, um, you know what? I actually thought of that as well. And if it actually says that, does it say it right there? Just because I don't have my book in, right in front of me. And there you go. That's a great, that is a great gem right there. And if you can point me to it, just because I can't see it right at the moment, girls, when it's oxygen. And I remembered seeing that. And if you can... Yeah, if you can actually, 23.2, perfect. It is preferred that the space be omitted when referencing oxygen. Christina, you get like the Book of Style gold star today. Thank you. That is excellent, excellent, excellent. Thank you for pointing that out. And that's why. So there you go, kids. Um, for those of you who remember Mr. Dressup and Mr. Rogers. Um, so this actually should be. 2L, as in 2 liters, no space, because of the second reference to Book of Style, which is 23.2, excellent, Christina, um, that when it's referring to oxygen only, you, uh, you just omit the space, which is funny because, of course, that just confuses us further why it would just be for oxygen. Um, but... Um, and I think the reason is because it just can, there's lots of um, zeros and stuff that can be used with oxygen as well. So good one. That's awesome. So 23, just to make reference to that again, 23.2.2. And I will actually refer to that. I'm going to put that right now. Uh, uh, for oxygen. See, that's the kind of thing that's just so book of style geeky. I love it. Uh, Christina, good job. That's great. Um, and I will actually include it in my notes as well when I send this out for everybody. Um, great. Uh, great. Okay, perfect. So, um, so that's, and of course, now you'll have to, I didn't uh, specifically put one in this example uh, when it's part of a Virgo uh, construction, uh, but you'll see some in the, in the book of style as well um, there. So for units of measure, it can be tricky. Most of it is intuitive, but it can be tricky. You just have to remember uh, where to look, number one, where to, where to go to look, and, uh, and just keep, keep it, try to keep it all together in terms of um, in your head, which is the uh, second, clearly. Um, challenge for all of us. So um, let's just see what I have here. There we go. So the, the still carrying on that same unit in terms of units of measure, of course, it says to spell out non-metric units of measure to express weight, depth, dis distance, height, length, and width. Do not abbreviate most non-metric units of measure. I get this all the time in reports, even in the practicum and all throughout. Um, earlier, certainly you can imagine, but um, this is something that you want to take note of now just because it's a good thing to note. Non-metric, meaning pounds, ounces, tablespoon, anything that isn't metric that is expressing weight, depth, as you can see there. I don't need to repeat them. So, And you do not abbreviate most non-metrics units of measure. 
That includes what else? Oh, inches and feet. So keep that in mind. That's a good example um, to, to have there. And I'm not sure if I include it in the next one, but if not, I'm going to mention the, the one here. So I think that's pretty straightforward. Oh, yes. And um, there it is. The exception, my nice little box up here, of course, the exception, do not abbreviate most non-metric units of measure except uh, when the expression combines a metric unit with a non-metric unit. Oh, but of course. And here's an example. Her IV was set to run at 10 micrograms per minute. I think that's what's actually in the book is how to micrograms per minute um, in the ER. So the, this is an exception. Why? Because the metric unit, of course, is micrograms and the non-metric is minutes. And on top of that, it's a Virgo construction as well. So um, yeah. this can get confusing, of course, as well. But just know that when you think, okay, whenever there's metric units that are involved there, you can start thinking almost immediately about, okay, wait, abbreviations or no, and then dig deeper into this, into this unit. So that's just another one of those dig deep kind of ones and kilograms per meter squared, and, and that's a whole other kettle of fish that we'll get to um, down the road here too, hopefully today. If not, it will be another time too. So exceptions. These are tricky and challenging exceptions. So when it uh, combines a metric unit with a non-metric unit, so micrograms per minute, um, kilometers per hour, another good one. Um, so those are ones that you can actually, if you think of any, you can you can go under, um, you can go under uh, your abbreviate, yes, it's abbreviated here um, because it says the, the ex it's an exception, right, Jennifer? So she was just asking whether it's abbreviated because otherwise it says to spell out non-metric units uh, of measure, blah, 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 uh, do not abbreviate most non-metric units of measure except when the expression combines a metric unit with a non-metric unit. So here the non-metric unit is minute. And so here it actually is abbreviated, even though it's a non-metric unit, it's abbreviated. Why? Because it's, it's used in an expression that combines a metric unit with a non-metric unit. So that's why. And that's clarified maybe a little bit more um, in 9.1.9 uh, with cross-references cross as well. So hopefully, um, yeah that I didn't confuse you more there but it's just uh, and and like I say you'll come across a few others and this is uh, one of the places where you can go as well there are cross references but we'll not dig too deep into that one today we're going to get come back because it, it's men mentioned elsewhere in this chapter okay okay here we go a little test here we go get your pens and pencils out ladies um, here we go correct the abbreviation errors in each of the following so there's four here one uh, was she was told to take the Tylenol. Don't take me. Don't give them to me all at once. Okay, just write them down, note them, and then you can yell them, yell out the answers later when we're asked. So she was told to take the Tylenol PRN pain or fever. The second one is the wound measured three in, as in for inches, from just below the patella. And then the third one is title of operation ORIF left radius radius. And that isn't a space there, by the way. I don't know why it looks so big, but it isn't. Uh, and the baby weighed 8 pounds, 12 ounces. And, of course, both of them are uh, abbreviated. So 8 LBS and then 12 OZ for ounces. So I'll give you just a couple of minutes, not even. I'll give you a few seconds to, to go over those. Um, they're pretty straightforward, I know. But just um, there actually is another gem in here, which I'm excited about as well. Um, Anne's already replying here. Okay, so the first one, um, we're going to go, yeah, three inches, eight pounds, 12, yeah. <laughs> expand ORF, yep, keep them coming, three inches, correct, yeah, you guys got it. Now, the, I'm going to show you here, three inches, right, yeah, and the title, expand ORIF, right, no caps on PRN. I'm going to go ahead and, and show you here, so yes, um, this is how in pink or purple, whatever you see there, PRN um, is, of course, uh, it's got a different color period there. Uh, but PRN, that's right. So they should, because it's a Latin abbreviation, and that's actually further on in the chapter two, and hopefully we'll get to it. We're running 
out of time. PRN with uh, periods because it's related to dosage. Uh, wound measured three inches. Why? Why is it not three in? Because it says to spell out non-metric units. Okay. And title ORIF has to be um, expanded there because it's in the title of an operation. Now, there's a big debate over whether or not you actually include that comma to separate ORIF or not. It's acceptable either way, so don't get too hung up on that. Open reduction internal fixation uh, with or without the comma in between there is absolutely fine for now. But yes, you are to expand it. That's the bottom line. Now, the fourth one is where we have another little bit of a gem. The baby weighed 8 pounds, 12 ounces. Um, and there, you'll see, if I go back, you'll see that there actually was not only were the, was it abbreviated, but it also had a comma there. And here in the actual uh, answer, it has 8 pounds, no comma, 12 ounces. Why is that? Why is there no comma between 8 pounds and the 12 ounces? Uh, one unit. Okay, give me a book of style reference. Uh, you're on the right track, but give me the book of style reference. <laughs> Yay! I love little gems. I'm going to give you about another 10 seconds, Jeopardy style. Nope. <laughs> Although, that's where we are, Cheryl. BOS, uh, and it's in a completely different reference. <laughs> that's why it's a bonus. It actually says, uh, do not use a comma or other punctuation between units of the same dimension. So that's 12.2.1. And you'll see it actually, if you flip there, electronically or otherwise, if you go to 12.2.1, and of course we're not going further down there today, but I just wanted to point it out because it's perfect timing. If you go there in terms of basic units and properties, um, it'll actually tell you not to... Um, do not use a comma or other punctuation between that. So they also reference pounds and ounces and feet and inches. So the dimensions, of course, in the other dimension, not as in like the twilight zone, but in uh, in dimensions in terms of weight, um, depth, and that kind of thing. So height, of course, height there is being referred to and so on. So that's just another little gem that you got today. Um, um, as in terms of, it's a small thing again, but um, but it's a thing and you don't use a comma there, okay? So that's kind of a fun little bonus. Um, I'm just gonna check on the time. We're, of course, 15 minutes out, let me see. Let's move on. Now, unless you have questions with that, um, we're just gonna zoom, keep zooming forward, okay? And even if you do have a question, you can certainly ask it and we'll, uh, we can get to it in a minute, okay? So uh, these are pretty straightforward. I wanted to mention them just because we're there. So capitalization, of course, um, again, I do still get this even in the practicum where people are, are uh, not capitalizing property. And we're just going to zoom through these because I think they're probably fairly intuitive. So 9.2.2 on capitalization says do not capitalize most units of measure or their abbreviations. And I think uh, actually it probably should say metric units of measure there. But generally speaking, um, sorry, let me just go forward. Um, yeah, units of measure. So meter is M, kilogram is kg, centimeter is cm. Um, that's very straightforward. Now, again, and they, they make a whole list of them, of course, in the book of style. And, of course, exceptions, there are always. Um, leader, of course, is L. And that nice little book of style gem that, that we uh, came across today as well, which is the 23... Um, point two point two related to oxygen. That's a great one, and we're going to note that one in the in this as well. But Kelvin, milliliter. That's another one that even in practicum I still get people just typing m small l. Very important one to note. If this is news to you, this is an exception to the capitalization, and it should be m capital L because it represents um, milliliter. And decibel is the b is capitalized there. Okay. I think that's fairly straightforward, and you can note that in 9.2.2. Um, we're going to go, oh, of course, yay, another cartoon. Um, <laughs> it just, I have 
teenagers, so it's kind of funny. Um, just a nice little light note of levity, um, speaking of clarity and so on. So uh, we're going to just keep on trucking here. And, of course, it says my teacher isn't qualified to teach spelling because, really, <laughs> it's just not just single letters. That's just your little joke for today. Carrying on. Um, okay, here's one that's I know you're all going to get all twisted up on this one. Um, capitalizing genus names and species. Um, so, of course, the capitalization rule says always capitalize genus name abbreviations when they are accompanied by the species name. So, and you'll see here I put a little note that there is a trend toward um, BRB is Lana is be right back. Um, trend toward dropping the period after the genus. So you'll often see C. difficile, E. coli, H. as you can see on the screen here. Um, you can actually, um, uh, it, it wouldn't be incorrect to include H period and then your influenza or E period coli or C period difficile. Um, but there is a trend toward dropping that period off after the genus. So the genus is the is the first part, for example, and then this would be considered the, the second part is the species name. So that is actually clarified a little bit in your book of style as well. But these are ones that you'll see, even if you didn't know what they were, this is what this represents. The first initial or the first letter typically is short or the initial for the genus. And the second part here is the species. Okay. Um, so that's pretty straightforward. So you capitalize that and you can put a period or not, but there is a trend toward dropping the period after the gene, uh, genus. Okay, but what about C. diff? Because it actually says, for example, do not abbreviate the species name even if the genus name is abbreviated. So here, this is the genus name, C, okay, Clostridium, and but diff, we get that all the time. So Amber's saying dropping the period would also depend on the preference of the, I think she said the client, sorry, it disappeared, of the dictator, not of the dictator. It's never the preference, I shouldn't say never, but not usually the preference of the dictator. It's the preference of your client. Um, so here you'll see, we see all the time, and you'll hear it all the time. Doctors will dictate C. diff all the time. Um, so what do you think? Um, even though the Book of Style 9.2.2 on capitalization says, do not abbreviate the species name, so we're talking now about this part, the species name is the second part, even if the genus name is abbreviated. Okay, so just to recap, see back here, sorry, I'm just going to click here. Because here it has, so uh, here it says to capitalize the genus rule, uh, the genus name, when they are accompanied by the species name, okay? So, and it also says, kind of as an addendum just after that, so do not abbreviate the species name even if the genus name is abbreviated. So you, so you think here, well, C. diff then wouldn't be appropriate. We have to actually put C. difficile because of this rule that says do not abbreviate the species name. Okay, except, yeah, and someone uh, just uh, hinted to it here, except in verbatim environments. So, you'll think, oh, wait a minute, I had a report the other day that I had the, do the doctor dictated C. diff, I put difficile, and it marked me as an error. Well, okay, that would be a variance, uh, certainly, but C. diff, generally speaking, in some environments, wouldn't be um, acceptable because of the Bill Costell reference here that you see. Um, but if you actually just put C. diff in a verbatim environment, as someone mentioned, um, that would be okay. So that's why I say you're going to get twisted up here, because C. diff is actually dictated. It's verbatim. However, if you put C. difficile, for example, I would not mark that as an error, because technically you're following the book of style, but really you should, uh, it would be perfectly acceptable to get to include C. diff, because it's verbatim. Okay? Questions on that? Are all of you just shaking your head at me more than usual? Probably. <laughs> Okay, we're going to move on really quickly here because um, we're actually, you know, we're almost out of time, and I think I'm almost finished anyway with my notes. But um, just a couple of notes on 9.2.3, punctuation and possession, and we'll pick this up where we where we uh, left off here. As you can see here, don't use periods within or at the end of most abbreviations, including acronyms, abbreviated metric units of measure, and brief forms. I think that's fairly straightforward for all of you. But you'll see here, of course, these are the non-metric and that's capitalized 
just because it was at the beginning of a sentence for some reason. So it shouldn't be. It should be just inches, like a small i there. But it, the system actually did that. So inches, feet, pounds. There's no periods, and they're actually spelled out. Of course, these are um, you can WBC or WBC. Un, all underscore or uh, lowercase is acceptable. So is all capitals. But be consistent um, here because you'll notice there's no there's no periods. Okay, no periods. And that's pretty pretty straightforward, I think. And also, do not use periods with abbreviated academic degrees and professional credentials or courtesy titles. So these days now, we don't use it after MD, CHDS, which of course is Certified Healthcare Documentation Specialist, even after Doctor. That's a courtesy title, by the way. Miss or Doctor is a courtesy title, Mr. Uh, Jim A. Smith, Jr., Walter W. Adams III, etc. So you don't use periods. It wouldn't be an error, but this way, these days, it, there's a movement toward not you using them according to the book of style. Okay. And now I'm moving fairly quickly here, um, but we do use periods in lowercase drug-related abbreviations derived from Latin terms. And as you can see here, of course, BID. This is fairly straightforward, and this is listed in your book of style as well, right before the dangerous abbreviation. So actually, we're, we're just about at questions, and then we're going to try to end on time here. So BID, TID, AC, which is short for before meals, PRN, PO, and here you can see this is identified and um, indicated in the book of style as well. Why there's why that's why there's no space between the Q and the four there. And it's actually um, outlined why um, in in the book of style. Essentially, it's just to avoid um, error. That's supposed to have a period there, by the way, as well. That system, sorry, that that was done, and it, it took it out right before I did. That there's supposed to be, um, and there's supposed to be a period there. Okay. Uh, does Canscribe want you to type doctor? You know what? Um, it's a good question, Jennifer. And there's no uh, there's no uh, rule in account specifics, specifically as it relates to courtesy titles. So it would be okay if you didn't. Yeah, because it's a book of style. That's our second reference. So, and just a note here as well. This after this should be a period. I don't know why there isn't one there, but they're supposed to be because of the system. Same as when it put a. Sorry about that, but it's yeah it's supposed to have a period. So why do you think why do you think uh, BID and things related to drug related abbreviations um, are uh, not uh, sorry have periods? I think I missed the question. Oh yeah no I didn't answer it uh, yet because why why do you think that is sorry it doesn't actually have the answer. The, this is so that that's right Christine you're absolutely right because. Uh, you don't want them to be misread as a word, and of course, as we know, bid or bid without the without the um, periods can be a word. Bid and tid, well, it couldn't really be, but you can see how it could easily get misread as a word. Okay. So, um, and I think we is there a space between the four and the eight? Sorry, I'm going to go back here. There is a space. There's no space between the Q and the four. But there is a space between the four and the H, and there's supposed to be, you know what, a period. I'm just going to fix that right now because it's bugging me. There is supposed to be a period there. There. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, sorry. So, Patricia, you, uh, that's a bit of a bunny trail. Okay, so you know what? I'm going to just uh, move forward here, and and uh, I think that's probably it before now. But you'll you'll see here. Uh, let's talk about speed type in just a second, gals. But you'll see here, just in terms of possession and punctuation and plurals, there you can see that use a lowercase s without an apostrophe to, to form the plural of capitalized abbreviation, acronym or brief form. So, EKGs, PVCs cabbages or and these are short forms of course so just a regular s with capitalized abbreviations but use an apostrophe s to por form the plural of single letter abbreviations and lowercase abbreviations so you can see there yeah so numbers single letters apostrophe s is there and here because they're um, because wbc yeah is not Latin, of course. So there's an apostrophe S there for lowercase and single letter abbreviations. Okay. 
So I know we're really zipping through now. Uh-oh, Lana's got a question, I'm sure. So here you can just correct these very quickly. Uh, it is tricky, Lana, but it's only tricky because the Latin abbreviations are the ones that require the periods. Just think of it that way. Review that in the Book of Style. It'll actually, I hope, become a little more clear. And while we're talking about this, you guys can do this. Um, you can do this uh, little test here. It's fairly straightforward, I think, and it's not going to trip many of you up. Yeah, that's good. I see you all having speed type uh, yeah, discussions there. That's great. And that's, yeah, I'll leave you to do that for sure. That's great. Good suggestions. So here it's fairly straightforward. I think you'll get this um, as well. I'm just going to give a couple more seconds. Yep. Yep. That's good, Amber. That's right. And doctor without a period. That's right. Does anyone see my little joke there? Come on, people. No, Judy, there's no space between E and coli. Just so you know, remember the genus and species are separated, but they don't have to be separated by um, the um, period there. <laughs> yeah, see, I couldn't help myself. So CBCs, no apostrophe, just the S, because it's all capital. Okay. Um, no, I know you should put a space, Judy. Sorry, that's what I meant. Uh, LIMPS, it's a short form, so you're just using an S for plural. Sorry. <laughs> and E. coli, again, no space because you're separating the genus from the species, um, but there's no period. Okay. And PVCs, again, because it's all caps, just an S. And apostrophe S on the T's because it's a single letter abbreviation. And doctor, I can see more the ophthalmologist. <laughs> um, because there's and there's no period there after the um, courtesy title okay so that was really quick there and here's another joke for you of course um, for those of you though that don't know what BRB and you clearly don't have teenagers yet because you'll hear about this all the time BRB is usually intended to mean be right back lol uh, is la uh, laughing out loud and uh, well cool is just <laughs> when they really don't want to talk to you anymore and don't care <laughs> anyway um, just a little joke there, everybody. That's it. Questions, I know we are just about over time. As a matter of fact, we are over time. So I'm just going to uh, open it to questions really quickly. And Lori's asking me. Oh, um, sorry. And actually, you bring up a good point. Um, Lori, I, um, and everybody for that matter, um, you... Uh, Questions, comments, or suggestions, I know you guys have to go. Um, so uh, you can email me directly um, if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions. And for those of you who are asking about previous webinars, you can find that on the website um, under the forums uh, or even webinars. Um, knowledge base, there's a couple of places where you can find it. If you go to the home page on the, on the site, you can... Um, you can find them there under webinars. If not, I can send you the link. Just send me an email if you're having trouble finding it, and uh, and by all means, uh, I will happy I'll be happy to send it to you. So um, for those of you, we'll be doing part two, which will be the dangerous abbreviations, and we'll re really be getting into the meat of it. And I will send you all the uh, PDF if you're interested in it, um, and uh, and let me know if you do want to have it. I can send it as well. Okay, so um, I'm going to just take a minute here to. Uh, answer questions, but for those of you who need to go, I certainly appreciate you being with me, and thanks for coming today, everybody. Next one's uh, Dangerous Abbreviations uh, or Abbreviations Part 2. All right. Thanks, everybody.